Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll subscribe today and register for notifications for upcoming videos. Today, my lesson is on zero and negative exponents. So today, you will evaluate expressions involving numbers with zero as an exponent, and you will evaluate expressions involving negative integer exponents. So our question that we're going to lead off with our lesson today is how can you evaluate a non-zero number with an exponent of zero? So if we have a zero exponent and we have a non-zero base with an exponent of zero, it's equal to one. So a to the zero, meaning any base except zero, any non-zero base raised to an exponent of zero is equal to one. If you watch my video on proving this zero exponent, then you'll understand it better. So please check out that video. If you have a base of zero and an exponent of zero, this is undefined. You can't have anything with a base of zero and multiply it by itself zero times. But again, please see my video on the explanation of this. I'll put a link in here for that. So negative exponents for any integer n and any non-zero number a, a to the negative n is the reciprocal of a to the n. Sounds complicated, but here's how easy it is. a to the negative n is equivalent to, flip it, 1 over a to the n and the exponent becomes positive. So a negative exponent is really representing a fraction. And again, a cannot be equal to zero because we'd have zero in our denominator and that would be undefined. We cannot divide by zero. So here's an example. Four to the negative two is just another way of writing one over four squared or one sixteenth. So you bring the power up to the numerator and the exponent becomes positive. Or you take four to the negative two and bring it down and the exponent becomes positive. So when you switch locations with a power from the numerator to the denominator, it doesn't matter which direction, the exponent changes its sign. Now I want you to know, because my students often make the mistake, that negative two does not make your final expression equal to being negative. It is just indicating that it's the reciprocal. So if we look at one half, we are going to take the reciprocal of our base and change the exponent to be positive. The reciprocal of one half is two. So we change the exponent to be positive two. Reciprocal, positive. Reciprocal, positive. And two squared is four. Okay, so you flip the base and square. Now I put the square in the denominator here, but I could also put one fourth in parentheses and square that because one squared is one. 4 squared is 16, it's equivalent. So again, the reciprocal of the base and then the positive exponent. All right, let's go ahead and try a couple. So if you think you're all set to try one, go ahead and pause and see if you can do this. Otherwise, hang out with me and we'll go through it. So we're going to employ the power of a product property. If you're not familiar with that, I have a previous video that you should check out. So when we have the same base and we're multiplying, we're going to add the exponents. So when I do that, I get negative 7 plus 7. I simplify that to get 0. And any base that's not 0 with an exponent of 0 is equivalent to 1 given the 0 exponent definition. All right, here's another one employing the negative exponent definition. So if you think you're ready, pause and try it out. Otherwise, hang out here with me. So 2 to the negative 3, I'm going to find the reciprocal of the base, which is 1 half, and the exponent becomes positive. And 1 over 8 is simplified. 2 cubed is 8. So again, I could do 1 half and cube it. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. Go ahead and try this. Pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use the quotient of a power property. Again, I had this in a future video. And that says to subtract the exponents. So five subtract seven is gonna give me negative two. 
reciprocal, which is one third, and square it. One third squared is one over nine. All right, here's three for you to try. Now I'd really like you to pause and see if you understand these definitions. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So in the first one I have the same base, so I'm gonna use a quotient of a power property, and I'm gonna subtract my exponents. Five subtract six is negative one. So now I'm gonna find the reciprocal of negative two, which is negative one half and negative one-half to a positive one is just itself. So I could write it as negative one-half. Remember, as long as you only have one negative sign, it doesn't matter if it's in the numerator, or the denominator, or next to the fraction. I prefer to have my students write the negative sign next to the fraction. All right, the second one. I'm going to use product of a powers property. I have the same base of 12, so I'm going to go ahead and add the exponents. Negative six plus six is zero and anything but zero to an exponent of zero is one. Over here, I'm going to first clear this negative, okay? So I have one over three to the seventh. This goes up and becomes positive. Now I have three to the fourth. I'm gonna multiply my numerators, multiply by the denominators. I'm gonna use the quotient of a power property. Four subtract seven is negative three. And then I'm going to clear the negative exponent by the reciprocal, which is one third to the positive three. One third positive three. Remember one cubed is still one. And then three cubed is 27. So one over 27. Now we're gonna look at algebraic expressions. So now we wanna consider this. This is an expression. This is really negative six multiplied by x to the zero x to the zero is one, multiplied by negative six is negative six. Okay, your turn. See if you can do this. Pause, come back and hit play. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So remember, this is a product. This is seven multiplied by x to the negative two. So I'm gonna keep seven and I'm gonna use the quotient of a power property and subtract my exponents. Negative two subtract six which is seven multiplied by x to the negative eight. And remember that's the reciprocal, one over x to the positive eighth, so seven over x to the eighth. All right, your turn. Try all three and then come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So again, this is a product. This is nine multiplied by x to the negative three. So I need to clear this negative exponent. For an expression to be in simplest form, you cannot have negative exponents. So this is gonna be nine multiplied by the reciprocal of this with a positive exponent. The reciprocal of x is one over x, and then I need to cube it. So this becomes nine over x cubed. Remember, this is nine over one. Multiply the numerators, and I get nine. Multiply the denominators, and I get x cubed. The second one, g to the zero is equivalent to one. g to the negative nine, reciprocal, one over g to the ninth, which is one over g to the ninth. Anything multiplied by one is itself. Okay, over here, understanding that 14 is in the denominator and is being multiplied by y to the 10th. But I have the same base right here. So I'm gonna use the quotient of a power property and subtract these exponents. So I'm gonna have y, five subtract 10, all over 14. This 14 is being multiplied, but it's not attached. It's not going up. It's gonna stay down in the denominator because it does not have a negative exponent. It's got an invisible exponent of one. Subtract, and I get y to the negative five over 14. So now I need to clear this negative exponent, which means it's going down to the denominator and becoming positive because I need the reciprocal. So I'm gonna have one over 14 y to the fifth. So that's my lesson on zero and negative exponents. I hope you enjoyed this today and that you'll subscribe to my channel for future videos. Have a great day.